What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be one, unveiling my new camera and my new mic, so hopefully this video doesn't come out like crap and I didn't just waste all that money. But uh, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about AMD and all the stuff that they unveiled at this year's Computex and pretty much put that in perspective against their two main competitors, both Intel and Nvidia. And this video is gonna be done in two parts and I'm gonna be leaving a timeline in the description down below. And because I know that if you don't really wanna be here for all the tech mumbo jumbo that I'm gonna be diving into, uh, about halfway through the video, I'm gonna be kind of going into the actual stock analysis type of situation and type of forecasting that I'm, you know, putting into AMD and really, uh, you know, kind of shaping my overall price targets, whether it be good, bad, or, you know, neutral for AMD over the next couple of quarters. Uh, but, at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be going through exactly what were the new products that AMD unveiled uh, this past week, and really where does that stack up against the competition, and then where do I see because of the, you know, the improvements or the lackluster improvements in some cases, uh, where AMD really fits into that space, and do I think that consumers are going to be flocking to those products. So if you guys are interested in that, you know what to do, make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get in the video. So to start things off, I'm gonna be talking about the new GPU lineout that AMD came out with. This is their new seven nanometer GPU line. It is nicknamed Navi, and it is using their RDNA architecture. Now their new architecture is the first time since I believe 2012 that AMD has ever revamped their architecture on their GPU line. So everybody was really, you know, excited and they anticipated a lot of, you know, groundbreaking types of performance boosts uh, with this new line. However, AMD kind of took it in a different direction and they kind of weren't trying to go apples to apples with Nvidia. And so um, I'm gonna be showing some graphics now. The two graphics cards that AMD unveiled were their 5700 and their 5700 XT. Now these cards are trying to compete in the mid price range bracket for the consumer grade GPU. And so this will be directly competing against cards such as the 2060 and the 2070 that came from Nvidia this past year. Now, when you look at these benchmarks, you see that in titles, especially at 2K gaming, uh, these cards are, according to AMD, now obviously these numbers are, you know, provided by AMD, uh, so there might be a lot of marketing uh, stuff that's going on with these numbers, but uh, across the board there is a pretty good chunk of marginal improvement uh, between the majority of, uh, you know, the AAA titles that most people are playing, uh, going in at the same price range as the 2070 and the 2060, both of these cards offer a lot of FPS performance, especially at 2K gaming, and it should also be noticed that this same type of GPU architecture is going to be in the new Xbox S, uh, codenamed Scarlet, and that's going to be available in 2020. So assuming you believe the Xbox is going to be selling very well, AMD is going to be getting a lot of money off of pretty much all of those products being shipped with their hardware. Now it is to be noted that and AMD did take a different approach to building out their new GPUs than Nvidia did. So these GPUs do not really support ray tracing in its, you know, its finest quality. Uh, they pretty much looked at ray tracing and gaming currently is not feasible for the majority of people. Uh, you know, unless you're dropping $5,000 on your rig and you're going to be dealing with, you know, a significant uh, frames per second drop no one's going to be utilizing it. So what they did is they instead beefed up their current card for standard gaming, improved lighting, and also improved latency going from the GPU to the monitor. So that way gamers have a more, you know, robust and streamlined gaming experience uh, in games and in settings that, you know, people have been using for years. So that was the way that AMD kind of went into. Now, when you look at these two cards and, you know, what their price tag was in comparison to their NVIDIA counterparts, they are, you know, at a reasonable value. They are, you know, offering improved performance in, you know, let's say what the average gamer is going to be doing because the average gamer is not going to be utilizing ray tracing technology. So that's something I really want to stress here for those of you that aren't super into, you know, tech and the PC community and you're just kind of looking at it as investment. The, the, the utilization of ray tracing, it's one of those things that is really wow and looks beautiful if it's done well, but only so many titles can actually support it when you aren't, you know, suffering by, you know, such low frame rates that you can't even actually play the game to its fullest. So I definitely do not think that that's going to be a huge blow to the majority of people that are looking to buy these cards. Now, both of these cards coming in at, you know, about $450 and $370, they are very cheap in comparison to the NVIDIA counterparts. When you can see, I'm going to be showing you right now, the, uh, if you were to go on Newegg right now and you were to buy a either 2070 or 2060, uh, these are the current price ranges that you can have. So assuming that AMD is able to kind of keep 
uh, their aftermarket cards around this price range. I do think that that is a very competitive type of product line that they are rolling out, and I do think a lot of gamers are going to be interested in that. Now switch over to the CPU side and kind of pinning AMD directly against Intel. AMD's new 3950X is blowing everybody out of the water. So it's the first consumer grade 16 core processor. And now obviously we've had 16 core processors in the past. This one's gonna be the first one that is seven nanometer that is readily available for the average consumer. Quote unquote average consumer because you're going to be paying about $750 for this type of processor. However, uh, you know, at first glance, that might seem like a lot of money. However, when you compare it directly to the Intel counterparts that are doing this, it is a drastic steal. You know, it has been shown in these benchmarks here, and again, provided by AMD, so take all of this with a grain of salt, that it is drastically outperforming a significantly more expensive uh, processor. And now, gaming performance, obviously, once you start to get this high-level type of uh, CPU, uh, there's not going to be much gaming impact on this. However, it is doing reasonably well in beating uh, the Intel counterpart and other things. But when it comes to, like, a workstation uh, rig, and it comes to video editing, rendering, and doing all the things that, you know, are really taxing on the CPU, uh, just due to the amount of cores and the amount of threads that this CPU is coming with, it is just decimating what Intel currently has. So much so that Intel has actually called out AMD saying that these numbers are no way true. We want to test it in person, yada, yada. They want to get third parties going in because there's no way that our CPU is almost 30% uh, weaker than your new line. Uh, and so that, it, when you look at that, Intel is definitely freaking out about this chipset. And that is because Intel kind of views this as they've always been like at the top dog, maybe not in like, you know, a wallet saver, but they've always been like, if you have an unlimited budget, you will go with an Intel CPU no matter what the case is. But now AMD is changing that. AMD is changing the entire consumer landscape with our whole new line, as you can see here. There are just so many different price points that people can custom build their, uh, their rig to. And AMD is pretty much showing up Intel across the board. Now, I do think that this is a bit different than their GPU lineup. I do not think that their GPU lineup is, you know, that groundbreaking across the board. I don't think that, yes, it is cheaper, so it's pretty compelling to a lot of people. But um, assuming people like to keep with their NVIDIA cards, I don't think these raw numbers, at least from what AMD has showed us, um, you know, if say that these are 10% worse, that they very might be because these might be best case scenarios. I do not think that that's going to sway the majority of the NVIDIA market, but I do think the majority of the consumer grade CPU market is going to be continuing to going to AMD as they, as they have been for the past two uh, generations of Ryzen. Now, what does that exactly mean in terms of AMD as an investment? So as you can see here, and I'm taking a look at, you know, what type of revenue growth AMD may or may not be gaining due to these, you know, new massive product pipelines that are coming through. Uh, I do see them being able to maybe chip away at NVIDIA's market share. A NVIDIA currently has about 82% of the GPU market. Uh, and the only reason why I say they might be able to chip away at that is assuming the benchmarks that AMD came out with are, and they showed in this press conference, are actually feasible to the real life. Now, if third-party people start benching these cards and they start realizing that, like, yeah, no, they're about equal, I really do not see anybody really picking up an AMD card other than the AMD fanboys out there. Um, so that's something you definitely need to keep in mind. So I'm not too, you know, bullish on them really taking away market share from NVIDIA. However, I do think they might be able to whittle, you know, NVIDIA's market share maybe back down into, you know, the low 80, low, low 80s, maybe about an 80 or high 70s uh, as they were a couple of quarters ago. And I believe that that is, you know, kind of in their reach. And I will be factoring that into the amount of revenue growth I expect from them. On the CPU side, you have you have essentially a no reason to get Intel if all of these benchmarks are true. Now, obviously there are some programs that really, you know, prefer Intel. And so definitely people that are like really focused on like say Adobe Premiere, those people will be focusing on still just upgrading into a new Intel uh, build. But anybody else that's using any other type of programming software or any other workstation or any other massive gaming rig, AMD is just hands down the winner right now. And that is something that I think Intel realizes and Intel is very worried about. And I think that that is a good chunk of money that could be going into AMD. However, uh, it is to be noted that that is not where Intel makes most of its money. Intel does make most of its money on the server side. And based off of the new server CPUs that are coming out from AMD, they're really good, they're really refined, but they're still not quite the best of the best. And, uh, you know, so, you know, Intel's server grade chipset is such a wide basket. Now AMD is definitely making a competitive price target and a definitely amazing performance to boot. However, 
it, it isn't really going to, in my opinion, drastically shift the market in their favor. However, I do expect them to continue to slowly chip away at market share as they have been doing uh, in the in the server space, and that's where the money is to be made for both of these companies. I do think they could be, you know, making and kind of maintaining between a five and a seven percent lineup, assuming all of these tests are going to be fact checked by third party sources. I do think a lot of data centers are going to be able to shift to that type of chipset for their new servers, especially with all, with all of the Intel server uh, Intel server architecture uh, security issues. Uh, as you all know that there was Meltdown, then there was Spectre, and now there's another one with Zombie Load. Uh, Intel is definitely not having a good time, and I definitely think that AMD, everything's going right for AMD when everything's going wrong for Intel, which is what I've been saying time and time again. And I definitely don't think that that is gonna be slowing down in the future. However, Intel did come out with their new Ice Lake, so they will be, you know, kind of revamping a lot of their mobile app, like say mobile applications there, uh, you know, the laptops, the tablets, and everything that come with those type of sockets. Uh, I do believe that Intel is definitely going in the right direction in terms of that market. So I do not think that there's going to be a significant amount of penetration from AMD in that regard. However, uh, when you factor that in, I still do see um, at least 60% of the type of revenue growth that AMD has been experiencing from the uh, standard consumer grade CPUs to be continuing into the future. So whether that's going to be saying going at about 60% of what it's been in the past or, you know, say even going up to a little bit above it and say it's 110% of what it's been over the past two years. Those are the types of forecasts that I put into my revenue model that I'm expecting AMD to really kind of be able to like hit and whether they completely miss the target, they, you know, they oversee the target and they completely shoot past it and really what does Intel have to worry about in that regard. It also kind of goes down to, and I'll be showing it right here again in this uh, spreadsheet. Uh, this is kind of like my overall opinion of where I can see AMD trading in the next year or so based off these numbers. Now, I am going to just kind of say this right out. I do not think that AMD is currently a better buy than Intel, and that's an, only because of the fact that I do think that AMD if it is able to execute on its growth, it will have an, a massive run-up. However, I do think that Intel, even factoring in a massive revenue decline over the next couple of years, as you can see here, is still pretty undervalued. And I do think that if you want to factor in risk, at a risk approach and type of more of an value investor approach, I do think Intel is definitely a better investment. However, if you're someone that wants growth, you want uh, you know really high returns in a relatively short amount of time, AMD is definitely the one that's going to be able to offer you that over Intel. Now, Intel, I do think, you know, they pay a dividend. They still have an overwhelming majority market share across all sectors. And they do have enough money in their R&D department to, you know, if they could have bought out uh, AMD. They essentially spend more in R&D than AMD is as a company. So um, that's just something to keep in mind and why I do not think it is wise for investors to fully count Intel out. However, if you look at the way that the market is pricing AMD, the market does not really care about, you know, its profitability versus Intel. It cares about the market share it can grab from Intel because, you know, they're assuming that, you know, they'll get their costs out of the way and then they'll be able to, you know, pretty much uh, become as profitable as Intel is, but then with their section of the market and then, you know, their growth will come from that. So in my opinion, uh, between you know people looking at Intel and AMD, it really depends on what type of investor you are and then also how much risk you want associated with your investment portfolio. Now on the other side, when you look at AMD versus Nvidia, you have a kind of a different story. I do not think that AMD is going to be groundbreaking, you know, stealing market share away from Nvidia based off of their new cards. And that's something I really want to keep in mind. A lot of people are looking at the semiconductor space. They see it, you know, most companies are down between, you know, 30 and 40% with the exception of AMD. <laughs> um, but a lot of people are starting to look back into this space because they see, you know, really bright futures, you know, and they really see that, okay, either GPUs are going to be used in autonomous vehicles. So, you know, this is where all the money is going to be going. Or they see that CPUs are going to be used for all the amount of cloud and data storage that we are going to be experiencing over the next few years. So they want to go into that. So in my opinion, based off of what type of semiconductor you want to invest in, whether it be CPU or GPU, I do think that GPU, in terms of an investment, NVIDIA is hands down the better play on that category. And on the CPU space, it really depends, again, what type of investor you are. I do believe that if you want growth and you're willing to, you know, to kind of stomach that volatility, AMD has the ability to drastically outperform Intel and then... If AMD is able to really gain that market share, that could compound over the next couple of years. 
However, if you're looking for a risk adjusted type of return and you're going to be factoring in the fact that, you know, we may or may not be going through a recession anytime soon or, you know, a AMD might, you know, kind of slip up in their next line or, a or Intel might be able to, you know, pretty much put all that money of theirs to work and actually come up with a really competitive product line in their next iteration. Uh, who knows? I'm personally not really betting on that, but I do not think that they're out for the count. So uh, that's my overall takeaway. And those are kind of my, you know, assumptions on where I think AMD stock can go. But I'm really interested to see what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know that this, you know, AMD is a company that, you know, everybody seems to be thinking it's going to zero or, you know, it's going to continue to go and rip for the next few months. Uh, so I'd really like to know your guys' opinion on it. And let me know why you think AMD is a good or a bad investment. And, you know, really... If you've given it a lot of thought, what, and if you've given enough thought to put your money at it, let me say that, uh, I want to know what is your reason, what do you see the catalyst being positive or negative for AMD in the coming couple of months. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys got some use out of this. Hopefully this setup looked better and sounds better than my previous one. Let me know in the comment section down below, should I stick with this camera, should I go back to my other one and return it? Uh, let me know. Thank you guys again for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.